Today, the pigeonhole principle, made easy. Here's the first of three problems that I'm going to do today. So the pigeonhole principle is named after the idea of storing pigeons in holes. And it says that if you have more pigeons than holes, then at least one hole must have at least two pigeons. And one of the big challenges with pigeonhole principle questions is working out what, what are the pigeons and what are the holes. So let's go back to our first problem. A key insight into this problem is that the numbers in the set naturally form into pairs that sum to 15. So 3 and 12, 4 and 11, 5 is paired with 10, 6 with 9, and 7 is paired with 8. Now let's look at a solution to the problem. And I'm going to do this solution in the, in the spirit of the pigeonhole principle idea of putting things into holes, or in, the, in this case I'm going to do boxes. So label five boxes with pairs of numbers that sum to 15 as shown. Every selected integer is placed into the box with the matching label. We need to place six selected integers into five boxes. So, by the pigeonhole principle, one box must have at least two integers. And you can see an example here. So there must be two integers selected that sum to 15. So to the second problem. Prove that if 10 points are placed in a 3 cm by 3 cm square, then two points must be less than or equal to the square root of 2 cm apart. Now the clue is in the square root of 2. The square root of 2 uh, would be the diagonal of a 1 cm by 1 cm square. And there are two interesting things about a 1 cm by 1 cm square. The first is, if you have two points on or within the boundary of this square, then the distance between them must be equal to or less than the square root of 2 cm. The second thing is that if we were to divide this 3 cm by 3 cm square into smaller 1 cm by 1 cm squares, then there would be 9 of these smaller squares covering the bigger square. And so we've got 10 points and 9 squares. It's got a real pigeonhole principle feel to it. So let's try that with the solution. Divide the square into 9 squares that are 1 cm by 1 cm. We have 10 points to place and 9 squares. So by the pigeonhole principle, there must be a square that has more than one point on or within its boundary. So this square has two points less than or equal to the square root of two centimetres apart. And now our final question. At a business meeting, no one shakes their own hand and no one shakes another person's hand more than once. Prove that there are two people who have shaken hands the same number of times. So a nice approach here might be to just start playing around with a particular example. So I've got here five people and it seems like the people are going to be the pigeons. So the pigeonholes are going to be the number of handshakes and I've got here if you think about the five the minimum number of handshakes possible is zero that's if someone ha didn't shake anyone's hands and the maximum number of handshakes is four so one of these guys here could have shaken hands with everybody else in the room and so that would be four handshakes and of course we can also get one two and three handshakes so it looks like there are five possible number of, of shakes here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is five in total. And so we've got five pigeons and five pigeonholes. So the pigeonhole principle is not going to work. The key insight here is, I suppose, that we can't have someone having uh, zero number of shakes and someone having four number of shakes at the same time. I mean, you can't have two people. One's got zero and one's got four. If someone's got zero number of handshakes, then it's impossible for anyone else in that room to have four handshakes. And if someone's got four handshakes, it's impossible for someone else to have zero shakes because that person who shake, 
shook four people's hands, well, I shook everyone's hand in the room. So there can't be anyone that's got zero number of shakes. So that's, I think, the spirit of what we're going to try and do in the solution. So here we go. Suppose there are n people. The minimum number of handshakes is zero. The maximum number of handshakes is n minus one. If someone has shaken hands with n minus one people, then there can't be someone who has shaken hands with zero people. Similarly, if there's someone who has shaken hands with zero people, there can't be someone who has shaken hands with n minus one people. So we have n people and at most n minus one possible number of handshakes. So by the pigeonhole principle, there must be two people who have shaken hands the same number of times. And that's it for pigeonhole principle made easy. I hope you found it useful.